Usually my classes are very, very interactive, so I'm asking you tons of questions. So let me try this. So please work with me and think with me. I'm asking you these questions, and because you're not in the classroom, I will also answer them for you. But for you to learn, just go in your mind through and see do you, what would you have said. Uh, do you understand? So my first question to you is really, can you think of three global service brands? So with, with global, I mean, is strong in China, is strong in the US, is strong in Japan, is strong in Germany, is strong in Italy, is strong in Malaysia, right, and in Taiwan. So can you think of three global service brands? And if you were in the classroom here, I'm sure some of you would say Samsung or Sony or higher. These are not service brands. They are goods companies. Right? So really, truly service brands. So I, I leave you for a minute here. Think about it. Now think about some service brands. And to help you, you can also look at fast food, car rental, Consulting, credit cards, hotels, online, social media. So what brands come to mind? Because the only difference is probably social media because in China they're very different social media than elsewhere. Uh, so, I mean, the brands, if, if we did this exercise, and I've done this all over the world, I've done it in France, I've done it in Los Angeles, I've done it in Japan, and these are the brands that pop up. So it is really, it is McDonald's, it is Starbucks, it is Disney, it is Accenture, it is Hertz, it is Airbnb, it is FedEx, it is Citibank, it's Google, it's Amex, it's Visa. So you would have, of course, you may ask me if you're in class, so what about Alibaba and Ants and, and WeChat and all of this? They're not global yet. They're very, very big in China. They're very, very big here in Asia already. But believe me, in the Swiss Alps, nobody uses WeChat. <laughs> But there's McDonald's. <laughs> so it's coming, it's coming, don't worry. But what I wanted to get at is these are the brands that are most over, all over the world, people recognize them. And if you were in class, we would have a discussion on what do these brands have in common. Think about it for a second. Yeah, and uh, some will say, oh, it's a big brand, a clear value proposition. It's the same thing all over the world, right? So these are some of the things that, come, that, that people come up with when they try to understand what do they have in common. But one thing most people don't get, or I will not say, I mean, at nine out of the, uh, ten classes don't, don't get to this, is uh, because it's so obvious, it is so in your face that people don't understand it, but it is really... Think about where are these brands from, right? What country are they from? And if you look at it, in my class discussion, 90% of brands mentioned in service are from this, from this country. And look at this here, all of them are American. Right? Uh, think about it, if I had asked you, give me global goods brands. And then the ladies, I'm sure they say Gucci, Louis Vuitton, right? The guys say Porsche, BMW, and, and there's Sony, and there's Samsung, there's Hire, there, there's uh, yeah, fast-moving consumer goods, you have Nestle, you have Unilever. And these brands, they come from all over the world, right? So goods companies come from all over the world, but service companies are predominantly American. So let me ask you again here, what is it Americans can do? The Germans and the Japanese and the Koreans cannot. Yeah. So that's, of course, that's a very interesting question. I mean, why are there so many American service brands? And although Japan and, and Germany and Korea and China are so big in manufacturing, there are hardly any service brands from those countries yet. 
And, and we can have a long discussion here on deregulation and competitiveness of the economy, the size of the economy and all of this. But to me, there is a deeper rooted reason on this one. And let me tell you a quick story here. My children, they all went through the German school in Singapore. And have a guess, of course I meet the other dads there when we have parent evening and f social area, right? We talk, to, I, I talk. And then of course, we chat, so what do you do? And they ask me, what do I do, right? And uh, have a guess, so I mean, they're all Germans, they live in Singapore, they're all expatriates. So they work for Bosch, for Siemens, for Mercedes, for BMW, and, and so on. Guess what educational background these, uh, these, these executives have? So what did they study in their first degree and their master's degree? And I can promise you, and it's the same in Japan, it's the same in, in Korea. You ask them, what have you done is engineering. If they haven't done engineering, then they have done physics or chemistry or mathematics. So that's their engineers by training, selling highly engineered top quality products. So that's their background. And then they ask me, and Jochen, what do you do? Right? And I say, oh, I do marketing. Yeah? Have a guess what these people think. Yeah? And never mind what they say, right? Even Germans can be polite. Yeah? <laughs> but what do, these, what do these engineers think about marketing? Right? And it's interesting because most of them, they will think marketing is a hell lot of hot air, is a lot of fluff, and as a lot of Americans say BS, yeah? BS stands for bullshit. Yeah? So there's a lot of nonsense, not creating value. But think about this, this bullshit here is creating billions and billions and billions of value. So I think there's more of an attitude problem here. And it's also interesting, think about this. I mean, I showed this in Paris here, Starbucks in Paris. Do you know the French, they had tears in their eyes? You know, what do French think about American coffee? It's terrible, right? <laughs> but yet, the global chain is uh, American on coffee. And the same is for pizza. The global pizza chain is not Italian, it's also American. So America took all of these ideas, scaled them, branded them, developed them, and then brought them all over the world. Right? And that's a different skill. I mean, to me, uh, this is a partially engineering and science, but also partially it is uh, uh, marketing and intuition. So using, using Starbucks as an example, Howard Schultz, the founder of, or one of the founders of Starbucks, where did he get the original idea from for Starbucks? So I don't know whether you have um, heard this, but the, the part of the idea is the third place of Starbucks. So Starbucks offers its customers a, a third place. And the idea is that Howard Schultz was in Milan in Italy, in northern Italy, and he was sitting in a cafe and he just loved the coffee culture. Why? People, they stand there and they meet and they chat and they chill. They're in their zen zone, right? And Howard Schultz said, wow, we don't have that in America. So let me make our Starbucks in the US the third place. So the idea is, is a place between the screaming boss in the office and the screaming kids at home. You need these 15, 20 minutes in the Starbucks to relax, right? So that's why, that was the idea. Now how do you deliver, imagine, uh, you're a scientist, I ask you, deliver, design the third place. And then you come with what does the environment look like? What are the processes like? What are the people like? What's the training like? What's the product like? What's the packaging like? What's the taste like? What's the music, right? So you can see it's a whole mix of really trying to understand what experience am I trying to deliver? And on the other hand, to really do with motion studies and design studies to precisely deliver this 
Starbucks experience. So it's art and science. I just want to give you this introduction here. If you think services marketing and branding is very soft, it's not true. It's very difficult. Think about how you design something like this, and, and that's really the future.